appreciate everyone being with us tonight for, for this study of uh, the book of Galatians. Last time, <clears throat> I uh, uh, handled the first two verses, but since they're so short, I may just start over again. Before we do, though, let's have a uh, short word of prayer. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne of grace, thanking thee for the blessings that thou hast so richly bestowed upon us. The blessing that we have by being uh, brothers and sisters in Christ and sharing a like precious faith. And blessing for the word that thou hast left for us, that through that word we may become more Christ-like, we may know thy will. We pray, Father, that that would give us a determination to live by that will and to subjugate our own stubbornness to that will that we may be pleasing unto thee. Continue to bless us in all things that are right and forgive us of our uh, errors <clears throat> of which we repent and bless this study tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> As I uh, said last time, <clears throat> you know, when uh, Paul, he identifies himself as the uh, author of this letter, and he has a, a greeting that was uh, remarkably short. Um, and I think likely the reason is that uh, he was uh, somewhat uh, peeved at the uh, Galatian brethren for the fact that they were so soon forsaking the uh, Lord's cause that things to which he had uh, persuaded them to become Christians, they're, they're kind of abandoning that very quickly. And he was not very pleased with that at all. Now you can gather <clears throat> the things that are being said from his uh, exposition of uh, the, you know, the content of his letter, the things he talks about. He doesn't say that such and such said these things, but you can gather that from uh, what he is saying and, and what arguments he's making. So he starts off, you know, Paul and Apostle, and that's not unusual for apostles to say that. Peter did that. <clears throat> but he says, not for men or through man, but uh, through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Now, that's unusual. The uh, other, you know, Peter didn't say that, and Paul typically doesn't go in that much detail about you know, where his apostleship comes from. So it's very likely that those that were disturbing the Galatians were calling into question his apostleship. And of course, you uh, know that you know, Paul was not with Christ during his earthly ministry, but uh, that Christ appeared to him on the road to the Damascus and appointed him as an apostle for a very special cause that was to make him an apostle to the uh, Gentiles. <clears throat> and we read in uh, Acts the 26th chapter uh, starting in verse 16 he, in part anyway it said I've appeared to you for this purpose to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet Reveal to you, and he's going to send him to the Gentiles. <clears throat> so he was a uh, apostle to the Gentiles. That doesn't mean he didn't preach to the Jews also, because <clears throat> many times he went to the uh, Jewish synagogue in whatever city, city he went to and, and started there. But his primary focus was uh, with the Gentiles. <clears throat> but he, had, you know, made it clear that he was no less an apostle than was Peter, John, or in, any of the other 12. And he was not going to tolerate any questioning of his apostleship because that also put into question the things that he was saying. But he said in verse 2, uh, all the brethren who are with me. So there were other brethren there. They're just not named. We don't know who was with him. <clears throat> At least all of them. We don't know who was with him, but uh, they, by this greeting, they join with him in the uh, in this letter. So 
it uh, has to be the case that whoever opposed Paul would have to oppose these brethren too, whoever they were. And he says, grace, in verse 3, grace to you and peace from our God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> <clears throat> Regardless of the uh, purpose of his writing, and he'll get into that, Paul always expressed in his prayer that God would shower his grace upon them and bless them with peace and compassion. He was very typical of him. And peace was promised to the faithful. That's a peace that nothing in this world could disturb. It's a peace that arises from our trust and confidence in God and our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And that peace comes from a saving faith. In Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse seven, we read there that talking about the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It's going to guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And Jesus, in order to comfort his disciples uh, during the time of his impending crucifixion, told them, as recorded in John 14, chapter verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And the apostles would experience uh, trials and tribulations in their apostolic service. Therefore, for Christ gave them a serenity of soul through his promises so that their hearts might not be troubled and uh, fearful. In uh, verse 4 of uh, Galatians, the first chapter, it says, Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age? according to the will of our God and Father. <clears throat> so all that Jesus did from his incarnation through his resurrection, he did to deliver us from our sins, that we might be delivered from the evil of this present life in the flesh. As Jesus prayed for his disciples, as recorded in John the 17th chapter, verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should give them, uh, keep them from the evil one. So also, in like manner, he cares for us. Uh, surely, at least not here, no one doubts that this present age is evil. We can see that all around. The same could be said of many pastimes. Many pastimes are much worse than they are now. In fact, the world has been characterized mostly by the practice of evil from the first sin in the garden to the present time. The entire scheme of redemption, uh, redemption is according to the will of our God and Father, determined in eternity and accomplished in the created world. And Paul goes on to say in the verse 5, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So this is a, <clears throat> a prayer. The self-sacrifice and self-denial of Jesus to save mankind. Mankind brings him glory and honor forever. <clears throat> in verse 6, he, uh, Paul says, I, I marvel, and it's kind of a shock, that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. So preliminaries aside, uh, Paul now gets to the point of the letter. The fact that he marvels at their defection would imply that the truth of the gospel plan of salvation had been clearly explained to them and their reception of the same had been enthusiastic. The Judaizing teachers must have followed Paul's visit or visit every many he made there to the Galatians. It may be that the Galatians had not completely abandoned the faith at this time, but they certainly were beginning to do so. 
It also may be that they were more easily turned from the true gospel than they had been converted to it. And when it says uh, from him who called you, uh, we can look at uh, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 13 and 14. And it says there in part that, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're bound to give thanks to God. Uh, God from the beginning chose you for salvation to the sanctification, uh, sanctification by the spirit to which he called you by our gospel. So it's the gospel that is calling us. <clears throat> And it says to a different gospel. Uh, of course, we have to kind of maybe read between the lines, but it could be that the Judaizers were telling the Galatians that their message, <clears throat> uh, the Judaizers' message, was the same gospel that Paul preached, but with a difference. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter how they may have characterized it. Their gospel, gospel was different. Than the gospel of Christ once delivered to the saints, Jude 3. <clears throat> and Paul goes on to say, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you. The Judaizing teachers, uh, the ones who were stirring things up, you, you can see that from Acts 15, verses 1 and 5 below, and we'll get that in a moment. <clears throat> Uh, stirring things up. They want to trouble you and want uh, to pervert the gospel of Christ. It says they want to, but that may mean that they may not have fully completed their desire. They may still be in progress. <clears throat> and they want to pervert the gospel. They want to make the gospel into their own image. <clears throat> Acts 15, verse 1, that we alluded to, it says, and certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, circumcision is not mentioned in, uh, here, but uh, it certainly is part and parcel of what the Judaizers were teaching. <clears throat> and in verse 5 of the same chapter 15, it says, but some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying it is necessary to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. That was the essence of what these Judaizers were doing with the Galatians. You must keep the law of Moses in order to, to be saved. <clears throat> of course, Paul took great exception to that. <clears throat> in verse eight, it says, but even if we uh, are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you. And that's when he first preached it to them, that gospel that was delivered to them. And let him be accursed. <clears throat> and there's any other gospel <clears throat> um, it's a want of coincidence or with something else, <clears throat> either from passing beside it or falling short or going beyond it with a general meaning of other than. So that's that's a, another gospel. It's aside from, not coincident with and not conformable to, contrary to or against. <clears throat> that makes it another gospel, any other gospel. It says what uh, we have preached to you, <clears throat> the gospel preached by Paul and the apostles uh, was complete, absolute, and final, and not subject to amendment or deviation or addition to or subtracting from in any way. <clears throat> he says here, if he, Paul, or any apostle, or even an angel from heaven preach something that adds to or takes from the gospel revealed by the Holy Spirit through inspired men, that person is anathema for doing so. The principle is set forth in Revelation uh, 22, 22nd chapter, verses 18 and 19. You, you remember that, if anyone adds to these things or takes away from these things, then God shall take away his part from the book of life <clears throat> and so forth. So a very serious thing to add to or take away from the words of the uh, gospel. Any a sacred book that's been written. 
In verse nine <clears throat> says, as we have said before, so now I say again, so that we, all those who preached to him before, and Paul saying it again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. <clears throat> <laughs> so the warning of verse 8 is repeated for emphasis it may be that this was also told them in past preaching episodes it may not be the first time that it was told them <clears throat> to be received the gospel must be de delivered the gospel is that system of faith spoken of in Jude 3 as being delivered once for all, making this revelation complete and final, not to be perverted by addition or subtraction. Anything that going beyond what was delivered is condemned by God. In verse 10 of Galatians 1, we uh, <clears throat> read, or do I now persuade men? You know, persuading men is to win them over, to gain their favor, to make a friend of them. And uh, ASV says, seeking the favor of men. Do I now persuade men or God, one or the other? Or do I seek to please men? Or if I still please men, when he persecuted the church, that's when he pleased men. After his conversion, the Jews plotted to kill him, Acts uh, 9, chapter verse 23. So if I still please men, if I still persecute the church, I would not be a bondservant that is of Christ. Bondservant is, oh, another word for slave. Uh, you know, keep in mind that no man can serve two masters, Matthew 6, chapter verse 24. <clears throat> So he's using an argument. If, if, uh, if I merely was trying to please men, I wouldn't be a bond servant. So in order to serve Christ, there must be a, a readiness to surrender everything for him, including the favor of men. In John, the fifth chapter, verses 41 through 44, it reads there, I do not receive honor from men. But I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. For I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? <clears throat> <clears throat> in the the verses 11 through 24, he gives the historical evidence of his independence of men and as to his apostolic commission and his knowledge of the gospel. By making this known, that is, his apostolic authority, he refutes the misrepresentations of the Judaizers. He vindicates his independent authority as an apostle of Christ, and he unfolds the nature and terms of the gospel, which forms the basis of his arguments which follow. Verse 11 he says, but I make known in the King James says certify, which is a declaration almost the same as uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 uh, chapter verse one, which says more brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received in which you stand. <clears throat> So he, he declared it to him, he certified it. He said, I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which, I, which was preached by me is not according to man. Again, he's uh, uh, given his uh, apostolic authority to deliver the gospel. He would have them know that his knowledge of the gospel did not come uh, at the feet of learned men. Or the other apostles, but you know, also, but he was revealed to him by Jesus Christ. Now, this is part of his affirmation of his apostolic authority, independent of the other 
the apostles, and he'll demonstrate that later on. <clears throat> so the gospel is not a human message. Uh, since it came from Jesus Christ, Paul would tolerate no compromise in its message <clears throat> from anyone, including the, God, the Judaizers. In verse 12, he says, for I neither received it from man, nor was, was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and we may not get that in the English version, but the Greek, the I is emphatic. He denies emphatically that the source of his knowledge of the gospel came by man, but rather he received it firsthand directly by revelation from Jesus Christ. He offers no other explanation for his dramatic change in his past conduct. And it was amazingly dramatic. <clears throat> Verse 13, he goes into that. He says, for you heard, you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism. How I persecuted the church of God beyond measure, measure and tried to destroy it. There's no doubt that uh, the Galatians like Ananias knew of his persecution of the church. All of his instruction for men caused him to persecute the church, not to defend it. So his dramatic change had to come from a, a higher authority than, than men. Verse 14, he says, and I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions uh, of my fathers, and we see those traditions in Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 2 and 3. And it says there, Jesus talking, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? So, uh, you know, being the traditions are not in and of themselves bad. It's when they contradict the uh, the, the law of Christ. <clears throat> so, uh, there's no doubt that Paul was an exceedingly intelligent man. You can see that from his writings, and he had far surpassed his contemporaries in his knowledge of Judaism, as it was uh, then practice. He was entrusted by the authorities to the defense of Judaism because of his diligence in accomplishing assignments and faithfulness to and zeal for the tradition of his fathers. But he was wrong. So verse 15 it says, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, so his uh, personal qualities and, and attributes were no doubt respected and, and by God and could be used uh, very well by God. All his actions were done while thinking it was the will of God. He never acted contrary to what he thought was right in God's sight. <clears throat> so he could uh, say he's lived in good conscience to whatever day that he spoke those words. Paul had been selected from birth for the task that was assigned to him by Jesus Christ. This is uh, not without precedence. For example, in uh, Isaiah, or in that chapter, verse 1, it says, Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name. In Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse five, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. <clears throat> of course, I guess Jeremiah didn't know that, you know, the uh, fetus is not a human, but nevertheless. Before you were born, I sanctified you, or ordained you a prophet to the nation. And in uh, Luke uh, chapter one, verse 15, he says, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord 
and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He, is, he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Now Christ revealed to Paul on the road to Damascus that he, Paul, was persecuting him, Jesus. Now Paul saw the truth, and it had to be uh, quite a shock to him. He recognized that he was sinning by persecuting the church. He repented of it. He obtained pardon. Uh, through his baptism and responded to the call of Christ and then began his service uh, immediately as an apostle of Christ. <clears throat> In verse 16, he says, to reveal his son to me that I might preach him among the Gentiles. And we've uh, read that from uh, 26 chapter verse 16 and 18, which we just went over in Acts uh, 13, verse 44 and 48. Those were the accounts of his uh, uh, conversion or encounter on the road to Damascus. He says, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. <clears throat> he did not ask men what he should do, but he was instructed by God. Again, given the credibility to his appointment as an apostle, in verse 17 of the first chapter of Galatians, he said, Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia. And that's a Gentile region, by the way. And uh, returned again to, the, to Damascus. So Jerusalem was the political and religious capital of the Jews. Since his call was from God, it was not necessary for him to consult on this matter with the apostles at Jerusalem. Rather, he went to work preaching Jesus as the Christ in the uh, Arabian area. <clears throat> in uh, chapter 9, verse 20 through 22, talking about his conversion, immediately he preached the Christ. So he, he started to uh, immediately didn't check with the other apostles first. And of course, he raised some eyebrows in the process. But his actions um, were independent of the other apostles. And that proves that he was an apostle appointed by Jesus Christ. And he was equal in every respect with the other apostles. In verse 18, it says, then after three years, um, we have to, I'm not real sure when the three years started, but I would say from his conversion, <clears throat> he said, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. And that's in Acts 9, verse 26 and 27. And remained with him 15 days. And you find that in Acts 22, that's 22nd chapter, verses 17 through 21. <clears throat> you recall that when he, uh, he still didn't call Saul at the time, but when he uh, was converted after many days, you know, the Jews plotted to kill him, but uh, he was let down through the wall, large basket. And when he came to to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but of course they, they knew of his reputation, so they were afraid of him. But Barnabas had to uh, speak on his behalf and say what had happened on the road to Damascus. And when that happened, they, they of course uh, accepted him. <clears throat> and uh, he says in verse uh, chapter 22 of Acts, verse 17 to 21, that you know, when he returned to Jerusalem, he, he was in France and it was told him that he's to make haste and get out of Jerusalem for they not, will not receive your testimony. And he says, uh, depart and I, I'm going to send you to the, from here to the Gentiles. <clears throat> in verse 19, continuing along with uh, uh, verse 18, uh, with Peter for 15 days. He says, but I saw none of the other apostles except 
James, the Lord's brother. Of course, Catholics would say that this was the cousin of Christ since Mary was to them a, a perpetual virgin. <clears throat> so he saw none of the others except James, the Lord's brother and brother in the flesh on this visit. In verse 20, he says, parenthetically, now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed, before God, I do not lie. He emphatically averts that he is not lying in the things that he has just uh, written, which would contradict the assertions of the Judaizers. By recounting the events of his conversion, he is showing that he had not opportunity to learn the gospel from the apostles. <clears throat> so the only other place that he could learn it was uh, by revelation. He says, afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. So he was first conveyed secretly by the disciples to Caesarea. And there he took a ship uh, to Tarsus, Acts 9, chapter verse 30. From there, he was taken by Barnabas to Antioch, Assyria, where he remained a year, Acts 11, chapter verses 25 through 26. And of course, this city became his base of operations among the Gentiles. And we read that in various places in the Acts. <clears throat> in verse 22 of Galatians, <clears throat> He says, and I was unknown by face, reputation is, uh, by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. So he's probably known my reputation, but he's just not by sight. And this is Judea as opposed to Jerusalem. The churches of Judea, that's the, uh, the church of Christ, and the church which is in Christ. So there could have been a, a number of them scattered about in Judea. <clears throat> in verse 23, he says, but they were hearing only, and this is the, the rumor or the scuttlebutt that went around, said, he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. So it's obviously that the uh, news of his conversion has spread about uh, among the region of Judea. <clears throat> and of course, they knew his previous reputation too. In verse 24, they glorified God in me. So praise and glory was to be to God because he had changed, uh, Paul had changed from a bitter, bitter prosecutor of the church into a selfless apostle of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that was something to be thankful for. In Galatians, the second chapter, verse one, it says, then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. <clears throat> but Titus was a Gentile. Just keep that in mind. So the 14 year period was proof that Paul's apostleship and his knowledge was not derived from the other apostles. Because he didn't have contact with him for that 14 years. His apostolic commission was uh, from Jesus Christ and his knowledge was by revelation. Therefore, he was as much an apostle as Peter and the others. This, of course, is a further refutation of the false claims of the Judaizing teachers respecting his uh, apostolic authority and ranking among the apostles. <clears throat> in uh, Acts the 11th chapter verses 19 through uh, 30, we're not going to read all that, but that's the occasion of uh, Barnabas and Saul at Antioch <clears throat> and how they converted a great number of them. <clears throat> Excuse me just a moment. Uh, 
And uh, they heard about Paul and Barnabas uh, went to Tarsus to see Paul and found him and brought him to Antioch. <clears throat> and that was the whole year that they stayed there. <clears throat> And uh, said in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch, and uh, one of them, uh, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. And the disciples, <clears throat> each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This was the Manioc of the uh, Gentile region. And this they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So there was an occasion for, for uh, <clears throat> Barnabas and Saul to go to, to Jerusalem. But there was a uh, conflict. <clears throat> and and it was the occasion for a, a council that took place in Jerusalem. And we read that in the 15th chapter of Acts, the verses uh, 1 through 21. <clears throat> and this is part of the Judaizing teacher process. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. <clears throat> Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others, them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. It was not that Paul and Barnabas didn't know the truth, so they, they did. <clears throat> you know, Paul would not uh, countenance any uh, perversion of the gospel at all. And he knew that this was a perversion of the gospel. So he wasn't going there to get any orders from the, uh, the apostles. He was going there to find out what, how this, uh, <clears throat> you know, why people from uh, Jerusalem, Judaizing teachers, were coming down there and, and uh, spreading this uh, false doctrine. <clears throat> so when they came, they came to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they reported, of course, all the things that had been done uh, with them. But it says in uh, verse uh, 5 of chapter 15, but some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up and saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. <clears throat> so now he's found out where it's coming from. So now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. It's not to decide the matter, but it's to consider how this uh, was being spread about. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> Peter rose up and he said, uh, one of his marks that he said in verse 11 was, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Well, the they was the Gentiles. They were not saved by keeping the law of Moses. So Peter is making an admission here that even the Jews will not be saved by the law of Moses. <clears throat> and so uh, they kept silent. They listened to Barnabas and Paul uh, telling about what they had done among the Gentiles. Then uh, James uh, 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 spoke up in verse 13. He said, men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God had first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people looking for his name. And he uh, uh, quotes a uh, uh, something from the Old Testament. He says, therefore, in verse 19, therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God. But the only thing that they would implore them to do was to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. <clears throat> of course, uh, Paul and Barnabas had no problem with that. That's the very thing that they would uh, like to have done. 
And in verse uh, two, <clears throat> which I don't think we're going to have time to get into, so I better reserve that for next week. So let's start Galatians, the second chapter, verse two, next week. Thank you for your kind attention. <clears throat> 